Hello everyone and welcome to my look at the new patch coming out, patch 8.9, which is going to be featuring a new branch of the German tech tree, which is going to be a branch of TDs, which most of them are going to be very fragile, but hit very, very hard, which can almost stem all the way down to the very base tier 4 tank, which just have exceptional guns for their tier. So, you're going to start off with the Martyr 3, then it'll move up to the tier 5 being a Panzer IV with a uh, self-propelled gun, the Nashhorn at tier 6, a Stural Emil at tier 7, tier 8 is going to feature the first of three Waffentragers, the Waffentrager Panzer IV at tier 9, and then of course the WTE-100 at tier 10. There's also three new premium tanks, one for the minor race of the Japanese, one for the minor race of the Chinese, and then one for the major tree of the Soviets. A T-44-85 for the Soviets, a M-10 wannabe for the Chinese, which is actually a Taiwanese tank, and then a nice interesting new tank for the Japanese, the uh, Chinukai. So we'll take a look at all those tanks in due time. In addition, there is a new map called Northwest. This map is a large map and features a little bit of everything. There's also a new game mode called Team Battle, which battles up to 7 players in a 42 point spread. This is of course to be a team battle that is suited for the eSports realm, which we have been seeing a lot of in recent tournaments outside of World of Tanks itself. So this will be a new game mode, which is featured in the drop down menu which has been revisited and updated. So let's go ahead and take a look at the tanks and then we'll talk about the rest of the patch notes as we go. The first tank we see is the Martyr 38T, otherwise known as the Martyr 3. It's technically an incorrect model as the Martyr 3 actually has a tur or the gun shield on the rear of the tank with the gun hanging just barely past the front end. So I feel that this model is incorrect, but again, I'm neither here nor there nor have I created this game. So they're labeling it as the model the Martyr 3 or the Martyr 38T. Anyway, it features a 75mm or 7.5cm Pack 40, which is a very nice cannon for it. It was originally probably featured on the Martyr 2, but was removed in favor of some of the other cannons that are currently on it. So the Pack 40 itself is a relatively fast firing cannon, firing at about 18.75 rounds per minute, penetrating at a relatively average uh, 110 with an average damage of 110 as well. It is pretty accurate and pretty quick for aiming. It is a decent tank that will see really good damage and penetration for its tier. Hit point wise it has right under 300 but features little to no armor whatsoever. So do not expect any sort of help from the armor side of life. Your pool of hit points is going to be the only thing that saves you. Playing this tank in battles, I found it to be pretty effective. It ended up being a very fast firing tank, could move pretty fast, and its camo seemed pretty on par. Again, we were playing on test server though where almost everybody was playing with TDs, so that could have changed things up, but I did enjoy my time in this tank and it really felt kind of natural for that tier for the TD. It certainly was dishing out a lot of damage with decent accuracy and very good fire rate. Branching from the Martyr III, we have the Panzer IV self-propelled anti-aircraft gun, which features a gigantic 88 flak gun on it. This thing is a fantastic sniper and features a somewhat relatively slow rate of fire. It's about half that of the Martyr III, but its penetration is nearly double and its damage is well over double, seeing at about 240 damage as its average damage. Its hit points is relatively minor, 350 with a armor of non-existency. So don't bother to rely on your armor to save you. Again, this tank is going to rely on camouflage and its hit point pool with which to save it. But its accuracy and its aim time is decent. The, ac the aim time being somewhat slow, but the accuracy being pretty decent at a .32. The aim time taking about two and a third seconds to aim in. So, not exactly the worst, but not exactly the best compared to some of the earlier tanks. But hey, you're talking a gigantic 88 cannon on the thing, and the most interesting part about this tank is that the gun can actually traverse up to easily a 45 degree angle. So you can see that this thing might see some life in a future mix between World of Warplanes and World of Tanks if such a mix occurs, as this thing really is a flak mounted gun. Now. 
As for when I was playing this tank, it acted great as a long-range sniper and was best suited for when I was sitting back. When engaging close up, you really had to rely on people to make the mistakes as this was not exactly the best tank for running at people headlong. If this thing was kept in a back line, you would see it to do pretty well and being able to snipe is pretty much the key thing that all these tanks are going to see and they're going to have to deal with. At tier 6, we see the Nashorn, otherwise known as the Hornice. This thing actually is a chassis that we've already seen before, the Hummel, but this time instead of equipped with an artillery piece, it is equipped with an anti-tank gun. It actually features the 88 Pack 43 that we see as the top tier gun for the Jagdpanther, and is also featured on the Ferdinand and JP2. It is a very strong gun to be featured at a tier 6 level, being a tier 8 cannon, and fires faster than the previous gun, firing at almost 10 rounds per minute, deals about 250 damage, 240 to be exact, with a penetration of about 203. Now, this gun has a much better aim time, aiming in at 1.9 seconds, but has an accuracy relatively the same as to what we saw in the previous tank with the 88 pack. Uh, L56. So this cannon on this tank is fantastic and you will have access to it provided that you have already played your way up the currently existing German TD line. This tank has about 600 hit points, relatively no armor to speak of yet again, but its engine speed and horsepower is relatively low so you're going to be relying on stealth, cunning, and of course sitting in the back row to really suit to your needs. This tank, again, should not be fighting headlong at anything. Does have a pretty decent view range at 390, not the best, but hey, throw some binoculars on there and you'll actually be doing pretty well. You're going to be relying on your teammates to be spotting for you anyway, as again, these things need to be in the back row. Not These tanks need to be definitely played completely differently from the existing German TD line, which can take hits due to their armor. These, on the other hand, have none. Now, the funny thing is, you're used to seeing the... Hummel being able to get up and move, the Nashorn or the Hornice actually cannot get up and move. So you're going to be kind of stuck in a very low-key area. You're not. You're going to be able to relocate as needed, but do not expect to run to different positions as needed. You're going to be kind of stuck to about half the board. Now this thing can definitely lock down lanes and do pretty well, but I would not go and wait on it to actually go and reposition across the entire map. And again, it's a very long-range sniper so you'll want it to suit those needs. At tier 7, we see the VK-3001H chassis being used in a tank destroyer setup, being the Panzer self-propelled gun Mark V. This tank features the 12.8 cannon on it, which is a tier 9 gun. So again, we're starting to see a repeat in sort of fashion here, where we're going to be seeing guns that are two tiers above it being the top cannon, for the tank as opposed to the one tier or possibly on a rare occasion two tier that we were seeing in the original German TD line. So this cannon is interesting because it is only armor piercing or high explosive. There's no premium rounds if you use the lower cannon, the tier 8 cannon, the 10.5. That does feature a bunch of different things but having played this tank I'm going to tell you right now use the 12.8. It is ridiculous. You're doing an average penetration of 231 millimeters of armor, which is insane in and of itself, and your average damage is 490. So, while the accuracy is on par at 0.36 at 100 meters, you're actually seeing a very long aim time of 2.5 seconds. Well, in this patch, that's actually not too bad because the accuracy in since, what was that, 8.5 has gone way up and it really does help even tanks with slow aim time such as this. This cannon is phenomenal. I hit so many people very hard with this cannon. It does a lot of damage and is a great, great firing position. Now, one thing to be noted is you carry very limited ammunition. I believe, and of course the gameplay here will be showing it, that my uh, ammunition stores were about 15 total rounds. So you will burn through that ammunition real quick. So make sure you're placing your shots and taking your time. If you hit, you're going through and you're going to hurt something bad. This tier 9 gun is nothing to shy away from. And it's going to be a common trend from this tank on forward. 
that they need to be killed immediately when spotted as if they are loaded and are able to aim in and hit it's going to put some major damage on whatever they hit this tank stats though 850 hit points is a decent pool of hit points but its speed is very very slow only 25 uh, kilometers per hour so do not expect to really have to run away from this tank you can easily close the distance it's not going to be getting away from you at any point in time and of course its whole armor is less than non-existent so do not expect it to be bouncing rounds even an auto cannon can probably penetrate it on a decent hit so again this tank a long range tank the shell might take a little bit of time to get there but if someone makes that mistake and holds still in front of this thing or if you know how to lead properly you are going to put a hurt on people and of course being a tier 8 I mean a tier 7 with a tier 9 gun this is very phenomenal and is even on par with the ISU in terms of its damage potential. Following up we have the tier 8 tank destroyer the Waffentrager or weapons carrier or whiskey tango depending on how we want to break it down. This is the first of the three featuring the same sort of a uh, delineation. This tank features two different tier 10 guns that you can choose from. It really comes down to personal choice here as to which one you prefer to go with but being a tier 8 and being able to see tier 8s well you'd be able to see tier 6 through tier 10 I opted to go with the 15 centimeter in favor of the large damage hit as opposed to the 12.8 centimeter in favor of the penetrating hit so with the 15 centimeter and the 12 centimeter both are featuring a very long reload with the uh, 5.77 and 3.33 being the reload times the accuracy being about the same and the reload and the aim time being about the same as well neither of which is far and above better than the other but the 12.8 is obviously going to be faster firing and a little bit more accurate penetration wise for the 12.8 we're seeing 250 average with a damage of 490 whereas the 15 centimeter we're seeing 215 penetration with 750 damage so I ended up like I said going with the 15 centimeter because of the option to see tier 6 through tier 10 so for those low tier tanks I'm going to straight up one shot them with this 15 centimeter all the way up till probably tier 8 doing significant damage without much penetration problem and then going into tier 10s being able to do some pretty hefty hits even to the most armored of targets if I can either get to their sides or if I throw a premium ammunition round at them now this tank is the most low profile of the new tanks to come out as it sits relatively low to the ground being further down than the ISU when I was running next to one so I'd say it sat about where the main gun mantlet of the the ISU was able to come up above the ground so a low profile tank does have its advantages it can hide a little better but of course as with any other tank in this new line the whole armor is non-existent do not expect to bounce a shot at all period end of discussion this thing has a hundred or no a thousand one hundred and fifty hit points as a tip point pool so at least it'll be able to take a shot or two but artillery with any of these tanks is going to absolutely crush it if it lands anywhere on it or near it you're going to see a lot of damage a lot of dead crew members a lot of dead modules and of course your tank sustaining a nasty nasty hit this tank is relatively slow having a limited speed of about 335 kilometers per hour it's uh, it's decently speed I guess you could say you don't see things really racing around at 50 kilometers at the top tiers but still it's really meant for firing from long distances and putting on that nice relatively huge hit and then backing off to reload that 15 second reload with that 15 centimeter I think that's about where it was is a very 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 long load time so you definitely want to fire and then move away and then you'll come back to your head and position later it's a very nice tank I've had limited success in it when I was playing around in the test server I really enjoyed it. it is great for just popping shots at things and doing massive meaty hits to people that are not ready to expect it so if you see one of these things make sure you lay into it quick and then get out of there you do not want to suffer its return fire and if he gets lucky and or if you get lucky and he misses you close it kill him quick because if he gets the option to reload it's going to hurt really bad 
And again, the two gun choices for this, both being tier 10s, either one is fantastic. I went with the 15 centimeter, but I could easily see the 12.8 being very viable as well. Next up, we have the tier 9, the Waffentrager off Panzer IV. So it's a different chassis, the Panzer IV chassis, with the gigantic cannons on it as well. This one, we also get options for two different 12.8s and also two different 15 centimeters. One of both of the later versions of the 15 centimeter and the 12.8 are also attachable to the Whiskey Tango E100, which you'll see being able to have a multiple canister of different sized rounds on it, but that's neither here nor there. We'll get to that eventually. But on this tank, you'll see that we have both of them shown right here as to which ones you want to go with. The 12.8, seeing it, has a 5.61 rounds per minute reload, and its penetration rate is 276 millimeters with a damage of 560, accuracy being pretty decent at 0.33, and the aim time being actually very good with 1.7. So this is a very quick to aim gun. The reload's kind of on the slow side, but hey, you're doing a very high penetration, very decent damage with the ability to quickly re-aim, get back on your target, and fire again. Now, this tank also features the 15 centimeter that is a nice lovely 235 pin firing at four rounds a minute so you're seeing about what a um, this one is about 15 second reload whereas the previous one is probably closer to 17 in the other tank it also features 750 damage similar to the previous its accuracy is 0.38 so a little worse than the 12.8 but its aim time is 2.1 so not too too shabby but not as quick as the 12.8 centimeter. Now, it's up to you as to which one of these two you'd want to go with. I ended up equipping the 12.8 because I figured I was going to be seeing more 9s and 10s than I was going to be 7s and 8s. So, or would this be, yes, yeah, 7s, 8s, 9s, and 10s is the spread for this tank. So I figured I'd be seeing more high tier. So I went ahead and I equipped the 12.8 so I can get the better penetration, a little bit quicker rate of fire. But it's up to you as to which of the two you would really want to play with. My personal preference at this tier is going to be the 12.8. That, of course, can be disputed, and it's also down to personal preference. This tank does feature a very large hit point pool at 1,600. It's going to absolutely need it, as it has, again, relatively weak armor. But it does actually have somewhat moderately, and I'm using air quotes here, decent compared to the rest armor of 80 armor in the front and non-existent, non-existent on the sides and rear. Now... This tank does have a little bit better speed, hitting almost up to 40 kilometers an hour, but, of course, it is a very limited engine horse with um, 30, 360 horsepower, meaning that your torque is going to be very low. Your get-up-and-go speed is not going to be there at all. Now, when I was playing this tank, I actually had a relatively decent game in it, crushing quite a few people with the accuracy, the rate of fire, the pin on this thing, but it is the first of all these tanks to actually have a mobile turret. It can slew its turret and from what I can gather a 100 or a complete 360 degree arc but of course that was just my testing around and I didn't really get the opportunity for sure to know if it went all the way to the rear. But from what I experienced it was very nice in the fact that it had a turret. It was relatively low profile not nearly as much as the previous tank but it certainly is a decent profile. Of course, you're going to be taking hits in it no matter what you do if you're spotted. So long range and cover is your best option here. Of course, all these tanks should be rear guard or pulling up like a mid guard if possible tank destroyer. Definitely no longer going in the front lines. And the you want to basically be outside of their spot distance but within the draw distance so that you can hit them but you cannot be seen. So again... This tank, very fantastic. I had quite a few good games in it. The one that I'm showing, of course, being the most excellent, where I was able to take on quite a few different tanks, getting lucky in some of it. But, of course, I in certainly enjoyed it with the 12.8, but the 15 centimeter is an option if you want to go that route. Wrapping up our completion of the second German TD line, we have the WTE100. This, of course is the pinnacle of auto-loading technology, I suppose. 
and features uh, the two guns that we saw in the previous tank, the 12.8 and the 15 centimeter. So we have had exposure to these two guns in the previous tank, so we can make that assessment for ourselves which we prefer. But the difference being they are now auto loaders for the WTE100 as opposed to single loaders for the previous WT. Now, this one really comes down to which your preference is if you want pin versus high-end damage. Because the 15 centimeter, I believe, has a four round drum, whereas the 12.8 has a six round drum. I exclusively use the 12.8, which I think is the recommended, but I've seen people experiment with both. The 12.8 uh, the seems to be the one that I preferred most because I'm able to dish out a few more hits, get out of there, and not have to suffer uh, the reload as quick because I'm not dropping two, two, and then having to reload. I'm able to drop. Uh, three sets of two and that really is a strategy thing that you're gonna have to come across is when you want to reload This tank is going to be completely based on strategy more than firepower and anything else now There has been a lot of back and forth as to how to play this tank how it's going to appear in clan wars how it's going to appear in just standard pub matches and it's really going to be a wild card if nothing else it is a very fragile tank yes it has decent 200 uh millimeters of hole armor but that turret armor is non-existent and everyone's going to go right through it and an artillery piece is going to go right through it no matter what this tank is going to get pinned do not expect to bounce anything at all if you do consider yourself lucky now with that said people have stated that this tank is great if you hang it off board and kind of you know like i said previously sit at your maximum range so that they're visible within your draw distance but not within your spotting distance so that they can't spot you people have said that you can attempt to try and side scrape so that, that way if a lucky shot just happens to crease your side you're still fine instead of hitting your turret but the turret's still going to be exposed others have said just poke it right above a rock so that you can only expose just a little portion of the turret there's multiple things that people have said and of course all of them come down to your personal preference what you find works for you and your play style now, I play this tank just kind of straight out just to get aggressive with it and show its capabilities. Then, of course, playing in the test server, all you're going to see is pretty much this tank and then the Death Star, the 183. So, playing this tank, I found that the 12.8 worked best for me. I couldn't find a playstyle that made it optimal, but I was able to dish out quite a bit of damage. The six round magazine made all the difference in the world as opposed to the four round drum. I just found that being able to have those extra rounds in reserve made a lot of difference. I was able to conserve ammunition a little better. I could choose my reloads when I wanted to and then I can go based off that. I can engage multiple targets quicker and if I had backup of another WT you could easily take on upwards of four tanks before having to really have to worry about it because that's 12 rounds now you're talking about dishing out a whole lot of damage now of course the one downside to this not only is the armor but the minimum reload time for this tank is going to be relatively what 55 seconds i believe it is for a full drum reload on the 12.8 and i believe it is 60 plus seconds for the 15 centimeter of course both are being relatively close to a minute so if you want to argue semantics, a couple seconds here and there are going to make a little bit of a difference. But overall, you're going to see massively different uh, rates between the two of them. The 12.8 reloading a little faster. And of course, being able to dish out fire much better with that extra ammunition in it. Now, with that said, I didn't get a chance to test out the 15 centimeter in terms of its in-between reload time. But I imagine it's going to be relatively similar to the 12.8, which was two seconds between each shot. Now, that is stupid amounts of quick, and you can put a lot of fire on somebody. What I found that worked for me was I would put out about two rounds and disappear behind uh, safe cover. If I had to, I'd do three rounds and then disappear behind safe cover. But of course, getting ballsy, I'd empty a full mag if I needed to. But in other words, if you're in the realistic world of this tank, you're going to notice that the 12.8 is going to do best at fired in groups of two same with the 15 centimeter fire fire retreat wait a bit go back out fire fire retreat rinse and repeat over and over that seems to be the best tactic for this type of a tank being able to just not dump the full magazine because the moment you expose yourself people are going to do their best to kill you off as quick as possible the, the 
Potential damage on this thing is just astronomical. You're talking, what, 550 times 6? So you're talking easily 3,000 and, uh, what is it, probably about 3,200 damage, give or take, in terms of its potential damage. So you can one-mag everybody in the game. I don't think there's a single tank that can take this... Uh, take the abuse from this tank of all hits penetrate so this thing does have a decent hit point pool at 2200 its engine horsepower is actually decent and its speed I found was much better than what I first thought it was going to be I was able to actually move in and out of areas quicker than I was hoping and be able to um, back up retreat get all around as fast as I needed to it does have a full 360 degree turret it is a relatively slow turning turret but it's not necessarily as bad as some others. I think it can easily keep up with pretty much anything. And it can turn at a relatively decent turn rate if something's coming. So between the turret rotation and the hull rotation, you should be okay. But again, this tank definitely wants to be at very extreme long ranges. I found it to be a very, very fun tank. I expect it to run in Clan Wars probably in either a group of two or three. It certainly will not take the spot of the Fosh 155, but it definitely is a nice alternative to the uh, the Fosh 155. It lacks the armor that it has and the survivability, but the sheer damage output is something to be absolutely feared of this tank. So it's going to be an interesting little wild card, and it'll be nice to see how this thing shakes out in the long run. I again, I cannot speak highly enough about it. How fun it was to play. It is certainly a fun tank, if nothing else. It's viability, though, down the road. Who knows? Of course, a test server really doesn't give you the exposure to being able to play against every type of tank. So, who knows what's going to be out there. Of course, the majority of my battles were pretty much all tier 10s and were all this tank and the 183. But down the road, when you're starting to see, you know, E5s, IS-7s, a little bit of this, that, and everything, who knows? It could operate completely differently once you start seeing that mix. And, of course, the artillery and everything else, and the bat chats, etc., etc. So, that'll pretty much do it for these tanks. Hopefully, that kind of gave you the idea for the tanks that are coming out in this patch. We'll go ahead and move on and take a look at the new map, as well as cover the rest of the update during that portion.